there is a gift of dreaming and interpreting dreams, which is simply imparted by the Holy Spirit. It is a Holy Spirit given gift that the Holy Spirit gives for edification in the body of Christ. Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. I want to share with you, and we're going to talk about a couple other things here that's very interesting, but I want to share with you something that happened to me in, 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 in uh, 1996 when I was preaching in Brooksville, Florida. I was preaching at Dave Garcia's church. The, all the church knows about this down there from way back years ago. And uh, I was very tired. I, I was staying at a, a home with some friends. And I went into bed and I laid my head on my Dake's Bible. And I was so exhausted. Now, remember, when you're tired, it's when you're more apt to have these visions and dreams. So uh, uh, I went off into a full color. This was the strongest, greatest vision I ever had in my life. And I, I'm going to show you what I had happened to me and what I saw in this vision and what I saw in a vision six months later. And I had an artist. Now listen, in 1999, J. Michael Leonard drew the pictures I'm going to show you. In this vision, I'm walking up a sidewalk and there's a great big concrete wall in front of me. There are homes on either side. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why do I have a concrete wall there? I saw this. I saw a square shaped, what looked like a cloud shaped square up in the sky. And I thought, well, that's a weird shaped cloud. So I'm going to walk up here. And I was, I remember being barefooted. Barefooted means not being prepared for the event. And I walked up on the wall and looked and I saw a cornfield and I saw what looked like the World Trade Center shrouded in black. Now remember, this is 1996 in Brooksville, Florida. And I saw these five gray, I never will forget the color. They were gray. They had sparks and just like sparks of fire jumping off of them. And they were spinning and they were coming off of this building. And I remember that they were going to take out a row of corn each. And in the dream, I ran down the, 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 the road saying, we've got to get to the cleft of the rock. We got to get to the cleft of the rock. Now these were drawn in 19, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, 1999. All right. Now, six months later, I, I have this dream right here. And again, the same artist drew these pictures the same year. In this dream, I'm in a church in a downtown city. I don't know what city it is. And I see these five tornadoes come, come by. They're gray. This time they have paper, computer paper. I see Coke cans. I see all kinds of just paper in them. And it's dropping this stuff all over the place. But they're gray. People have run into a church. This is a, a kind of a grayish church with big stone. It's made out of rock. I describe this now. Look, I describe this in... Uh, 1999 before the year 2000 on national TV with these pictures. Keep that in mind. I saw three different ethnic groups, the African-American people. I saw the Hispanic people, the Asian people. They were praying. They were shaking here. Now, I walked out when the gray tornadoes ended, and here's what I saw was this picture. It was a city. It was a downtown city. I knew that. Inside, it looked like offices had been wrecked. All the office, th these offices were uninhabitable. Gra glass was cracked. There was all kinds of junk on the inside. And here, our people were on the street. There were people getting clothes. There were people getting toys. There were people getting boxes of food. And th it was after all of this, whatever storm this was, this was the after effect. And down here, there was one, two, three, four, five pearls. And I remember standing in front of a church and putting these pearls together. Now, I won't get into this pearl part, but I want to get into these pictures. Now, I did not know what this meant. This drove me nuts, I'm telling you, for years. All right. Now, right before 9-11 in the month of September, I remember going into my office and getting these pictures and laying them out and saying, you know what? We're going to have a terrorist attack on the World Trade Center because that's the World Trade Center. This was the most bizarre thing. People on my staff will verify to you, I'm not making this up. This actually happened. Now, when the plane flew in, it hit here and all the black smoke went up. That was the first building. All right. Then the other plane went in. And of course, someone said, why didn't you see two? Well, because they both felt they both were destroyed together. There's no reason seeing two. Now, the gray uh, tornadoes, which are here, was when the buildings collapsed. Remember those great? They look like tornadoes rolling down the street. That's what this was. Now watch this. Trade Center 1 and 2 fell. Trade Center 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 were affected and had to be destroyed because of 
what happened on 9-11. That's why I saw five tornadoes. The corn represents the economy of the country. So the economy was affected because in the Old Testament time, the corn, remember in Joseph's day, how there was a famine and it, was, it involved corn. So the corn represents uh, the economy is going to be affected as these five buildings, uh, five buildings and the trade center is affected. This fascinated me because I preached this in Baton Rouge, Louisiana after 9-11, two weeks later, and I talked about this church and a man came up to me and he said, do you know the church that you saw? I said, I have no idea. He said, it's Trinity Church in New York. That's where everybody ran into. And it literally was like this. They were all huddled together praying. And he said, if you go and get pictures, and I did, I went to the internet and found some pictures. The cemetery at Trinity Church had all the paper and the computer paper that I saw piled down in it. So all of these things, and what happened also is the smoke, these buildings, when the planes hit and everything, the smoke got into these buildings and these buildings were just, many of them covered with smoke and they were devastated and they had to be destroyed or some of them probably were cleaned out. I don't know the whole story, but nonetheless, uh, those major buildings were affected. This was a series, this was probably the most detailed, serious vision that God has ever given me in my entire life. Now. Again, let me say this. This was not a dream, but this was a vision. And so I may have said this a little earlier because we're going to talk about visions in a moment, but I got you prepared with this because I want to talk about visions. Now, another thing that's interesting is God can give you, because what we're going to do here now, we're going to cross, we're going to talk about visions and we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit moving, how the Holy Spirit speaks to us at the same time, kind of moving away from dreams now into this, into this more detailed area. But the Holy Spirit can show you in a vision or a dream a premature death of a person. Now, let me say again, doesn't mean it's going to happen. He sometimes shows you this to show you the danger that's out there and that you need to pray to prevent it from happening. Rabbi Getz, who was a Jewish rabbi in Israel, a man that we admired greatly, told his wife, I'm, I'm with Rabbi Getz. This is him in his office in Jerusalem. He's drawing, actually, he's drawing a picture for me where the Ark of the Covenant is hidden under the Temple Mount in an old chamber. He said it's in horrible condition, but that's what we're doing right there. Uh, I want to say this to you that he told his wife, he said, on a certain day, the Lord's coming to get me. Now, he wasn't really even sick. He said, but God told me he's coming to get me. He spoke to me and he died that day. That's very unusual. 15 times in my life, I have, I don't know what to call this, a death premonition is the best word. And I can tell you seven days before a very close friend of mine dies, I can feel it seven days before. It's happened 15 times. My former secretary who she and her husband now, Pastor Gina Bean, she used to say, oh Lord, you're not getting that death spirit, are you? Because I would go into this just really heavy heaviness. I couldn't function. Sometimes I would have to go home and pray. I knew something was going to happen. Um, before before my grandfather passed away, I had a dream. I dreamed I was in his old house in West Virginia, the old house, not the one who was in with the old house. Walked to the restroom and I saw, and I don't, I'm not trying to be weird here, but I saw my granddad as though he was sitting on the commode, not using the bathroom, but the, 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 you know, the lid was down, but he was just sitting there. And all of a sudden, three walls fell in. And I thought, oh my goodness, something's going to happen to granddad. Well, what happened uh, later was that he had uh, uh, a blockage in his intestines. Now, that's why the bathroom symbolism was there. And there was a, a collapse that took place and he had to have surgery. He never came out of the surgery. He had strokes and he went home to be with the Lord. But the Lord gave me a warning and a sort of a premonition of that in advance. He said to me, my granddad did, he said uh, months before he died, he said, I've had dreamed of my mom. I've dreamed of my dad. They look very young. I dreamed of Tony, my little brother that died when he was a little boy. They're all in heaven and they're saying, Johnny, get ready to come home and be with us. Now at the time, granddad was in his 80s, but he was very healthy, very strong, very alert, but he did go home to be with the Lord. So what God was doing was God was giving us a clear direction at that particular time. Now, what God does many times is he'll give you a burden or a premonition that something bad is going to happen. So we're going to talk about burdens a little bit later on, and I may bring some things out about that. Now, the fourth thing I want to tell you, I told you I want to tell you three things. And let me review these again. The law of double dreaming. Dreams can be delayed. Don't let that bother you. Don't think your dream was false because it was delayed. Number three, you can have a premonition of a person's departure. And we may, if we have time, we'll tell a story about that later. And number four, be careful of false dreamers. Here's what Jeremiah said in chapter 23. I've heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed a dream. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, there are prophets of deceit of their own heart who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams 
James, which tells everyone, tells their neighbors as their fathers, forget my name and follow Baal. So in the Bible, there was this real issue with people who would be a false dreamer saying, God has spoke to me. God has said this to me. And that's why Galatians 1, 8 through 9 warns, if we are an angel from heaven, preaches another gospel than you've heard, let them be accursed. Because people can have a false dream. If a dream, I want to say this real quickly. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. If a dream contradicts the scripture, then write it off. Don't even worry about it, okay? And if a dream has uh, symbolism that's not even in the Bible, I would not get too concerned about it because, you know, dreams can be because of what you ate. Dreams can be the atmosphere where you're at. There's a lot of different reasons why people have dreams. Now, a moment ago, I showed you a vision of 9-11. Now, a vision is completely different than a dream. And I want to explain to you the difference between a vision and a dream, if I may. In the book of Daniel, parts of Daniel was written in Hebrew. Parts of the book of Daniel was written in Aramaic. And in the book of Daniel, the word, uh, the word for vision uh, can mean several different things. Now, I'm going to give you the four ways a vision comes. Number one, you can have a vision when you're totally awake and you go into a trance. Balaam saw God with his eyes open. That's, that kind, that's, a, that's the highest level of vision to go into a trance and you just blot out where you are, your eyes are open and you see a vision. Number two, you can be awake and have your mind begin to see things in the spirit. Now that's another level and this is very common, but it has to be discerned. Some people would call it daydreaming, but I've walked on property and all of a sudden in my spirit, I would see a building there and I say, oh my goodness, we're going to build there. And I would later. Number three, a vision that happens when you're asleep, when it's full color and all five senses are activated, hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, and touching. And that's what happened with the 9-11 visions. I could see it. I could feel it. I could feel the heat. And by the way, the wall represented Wall Street. I forgot to tell you that the wall that I stood on represents Wall Street, which is right there in that area. All right. Number four, there's a vision where you can hear, uh, hear something uh, and maybe picture what you're seeing as you're hearing it. Now, I told you a moment ago that the Holy Spirit can speak and use his voice and make his uh, give you give you a voice to tell you things that's going to happen. There is a difference between a spiritual dream and a spiritual vision. A spiritual dream occurs only when sleeping. A spiritual vision can occur when you're asleep or awake. A spiritual dream is usually like seeing a movie picture, but a spiritual vision, you have all five senses. It's in full color. You're very alert. You're much more alert in a vision than you would be a dream. Number three, the images will fade quickly after waking, awakening if you're not careful in a spiritual dream. But every time I've ever had a vision, it, it stays with me easier. It's very clear in my mind. Number four, both a spiritual dream and a spiritual vision often conceal biblical, uh, biblical symbolism. Now, many times uh, they'll call someone who's used of God in visions and dreams, a visionary, okay? A visionary is someone that has the ability to see something finished before it happens. And that's not necessarily a spiritual thing. Businessmen can be visionaries. Number two, a visionary has the strength to call those things that are not as though they already were. Romans chapter four, verse 17. Number four, a visionary continues to believe the vision despite all opposition. Joseph was in jail, but he still had a dream. That's an example. Number four, a visionary never lives in the past, but learns from past mistakes to never repeat them in the future. So there's two things here I want to talk about. One is a visionary who is a person that can plan and strategize based on what they're seeing by the Spirit to build, to plant, to build ministries, to do missions trips. They know God has a plan. So a, vision, a visionary visualizes that plan by the will of God. A vision, however, is a specific visitation of God to where he alerts your soul, your mind, and your spirit to the future or to something that's going to happen. And because most visions that I've ever known of, even in the Bible, connect people with people, connect events, connect situations, and most visions will have some kind of a meaning. Now, as I said earlier, a vision will stay with you and all five senses are very active. I will never forget what I'm about to show you. I had a vision many years ago. As a matter of fact, uh, it was a July 18th, 2007, and it had to do with an oil rig explosion or something happening right off the coast of Louisiana. Now, I had an artist draw the pictures out, so let me take you through this vision. Now, here's the neat thing. People saw this before it happened. My partners at a partners conference heard me tell this. Okay, I'm in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I'm at a church, and they're talking about something big that has happened. All right, the first thing as I see, I see a semi-truck, and I see just one lone outfit in it, and the part of the truck is missing. 
And it, 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 my, my impression was, wait a minute, something's going to really mess up transportation. wonder what that would be. And then I go into a second vision. And when I do, I'm sorry, a continuation of this vision. Now, this is a vision. And uh, all of a sudden, I see people who are look like they're faking. They have fake wounds. Oh, I've hurt myself. you got to help me. I need money. I need money. I need money. Help me. Help me. And this looks like it's in some kind of a mall or something or like they have fallen down an escalator. I'm thinking, okay, this is really getting strange. Then I see, and I'm not necessarily going in the order here. I just want to show you what I saw. I saw a restaurant that was like a seafood restaurant and it's just sitting empty. I go in one minute, people are there. I come out the next minute, nobody's there. I I remember this one very well. And there were two people that were in this dream. Now, this is important. One of them, of course, is me. One was a, a pastor named Dino, Dino Rizzo, who pastored in, in a healing place, Baton Rouge, Louisiana at the time. And one was Rusty Domain, who was a missionary friend of mine. Now, at the time of this dream, Rusty was not in Baton Rouge, but in the dream, it's like he was. He was a living, I think, then, I think in Austin, Texas at the time of the dream. Well, I see this and I noticed that uh, I don't see a lot of cars in the street. I see mom and pop shops uh, that, are, that are kind of empty. I'm thinking, dear God, what's happened? Something's happened to the business. This is the one that got me. The last thing I saw was a, a, a to- an oil tornado. This was a tornado of black oil. This was an oil rig. And I saw this oil spinning all over, just dropping oil everywhere, all over the, off the coast of Louisiana. I knew it's where it was. And then I saw this rig and I saw a little thing turn and go click and it was made of steel with bolts and it just made a clicking sound. Okay, trust me. I said, what have I seen? This is crazy. I'm thinking, is it a terrorist attack? Is it a war with Iran where there's no fuel coming in? I didn't know. I called Dino, who was pastor of Baton Rouge, uh, as I said earlier. I said, Dino, something's going to happen, so let's go over this. And I went over everything with him. Now, let's go back in retrospect. When the BP oil explosion took place, that was the oil tornado on one rig that I saw off the coast of Louisiana. The interesting thing is that um, that when that happened and they showed underwater, it looked like a spinning tornado coming out from the water. And that little round thing that had the bolts on it is exactly what I saw. I described it. That's exactly what I saw years before. Okay. It affected uh, the delivery of seafood from the coast because the coasts were completely shut down. It affected mom and pop shops. It affected restaurants. And here's the thing that's interesting. I was told later a lot of people were saying they needed help to get money that may not have needed help. So that's what I saw here. All of this happened in detail, all because of a vision the Lord gave me several years before it ever took place. Now, uh, some people often ask me, they say, what are the things that you have seen recently? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spend the next, let's say, 20 to 25 minutes sharing with you some of the things that the Lord has showed me over the past couple of years that have not yet happened. One of those in, deals with nuclear reactors. I was uh, in a house with my boy and my daughter, and my son said, Dad, come and look at this. I walked outside, and I saw two nuclear reactors. One was sitting near like a coastline, and they started spinning like they were tornadoes, nuclear reactors. Then as I turned, I saw two trees that looked like they were bleached. Now, a tree in Nebuchadnezzar's dream can represent two world leaders. Being uh, bleached means stripped of authority or stripped of power. That's my interpretation. Then I turned this way, and they said, we've got to get mom in the house. We got to get mom here. And as I look, I see an open field. The field represents the world. And I see bulls that look like the stock market bull. And they all have the, and I'm not trying to be humorous here, but the Chick-fil-A cow, they all look like that, which is a milk cow. Somebody told me like a milk cow, but they had horns and they're all running as fast as they can, which something told me it's a stock market collapse based on what happened with the nuclear towers. Now, my interpretation of that, I want to go on record that I may be incorrect here. I believe is an eventual attack because of Iran's nuclear capability. And there will be somehow, the reason I saw the towers because it's connected to nuclear and it may be an attack by Israel, attacked by the United States or attacked by military somewhere down the road, I don't know. But it's going to cause a total uh, impact on the stock market. Now that's my interpretation. I'm subject to fallibility, so you'll know. I'm not saying God showed me. I'm saying I had a dream that hadn't happened yet. And it was like a dream vision because sometimes dreams and visions, they're so closely connected, they're, they're a lot alike. Now on a more updated note, One of the things that troubles me quite greatly are the tsunami 
uh, dreams I'm having. I'm not going to go through all of them, but there's been so many. But uh, months before the Japanese tsunami, I saw what looked like Japanese temples like you see in the movies or you see uh, on the Internet. And water started pouring over these Japanese temples. I mean, water was coming everywhere. And that's when a few months later, the tsunami happened. Now, I want to tell you something as I look in the camera. And I want to be careful saying this because people will come to me. And they'll say, Perry, should I move? Should I do this? Should I just? I don't tell anybody what to do. And once again, this does not mean this happens immediately. And perhaps this is prayable, meaning it can be prevented or it can even be delayed. So here's what I want to say. This is very, very, very important that I tell you this. I have had a series of very, very real, very, very vivid dreams of tsunamis happening. One happens on the West Coast. Now, the one I saw recently we were in California and I said to my wife, oh, Lord, get to a mountain as fast as you can. Look at the water. And one wave came in high, but another wave behind it was the highest wave I've ever seen in my life. And it's, I saw it coming into the cities and it was just washing everything away. And we went to a very rich lady's house. I don't know how we ended up at her house on the mountain. And the news was breaking that a uh, something had happened on the, uh, the, the, the underwater, the plates of the earth had shifted drastically in the Pacific Ocean and uh, it was hitting uh, all over the west coast of the United States and anything that was low was being completely, completely wiped out by water. And I've had that twice, very clear, clearly twice. The other one I had that I, I do not want to go into the great detail with it other than sharing with you that I was in a home in Baltimore and the water in uh, right off this, uh, the Chesapeake Bay had come up so high that it was coming up almost to the second story level of a house on the water, in the water area. And that was a very clear, and I remember in, in that tsunami, I said, get water, get it upstairs, get food. We were grabbing stuff. I said, look, there's water in the streets. It's a tsunami coming. And we saw the water and I said, it's a tsunami, go. We were grabbing water and everything. And I did tell the family that I stayed in this house I had in the vision or the dream. Well, I say vision or dream. To me, it was a vision. It's too vivid to be a dream. And I told them, go upstairs and store bottled water, replace it every so many months, keep it fresh and store food upstairs not just in an attic, you know, you don't want to get stuck in an attic, but upstairs. And the Lord even showed me something. And I believe it was the Lord. I'm going to say it was the Lord because I would never thought about this, but he showed me coolers, coolers that were strapped down that had a lot of uh, non-perishable food that could last for years. And people had strapped, uh, sealed those coolers off to where they could float. And uh, in other words, if water gets in there, Wherever they're storing the food, if it's in the basement, whatever, this will float on the water and they'll be able to get the food. Now, it wasn't like really heavy, heavy food. It was like the freeze-dried kind of stuff in packages. And I thought, boy, that's interesting. I do believe, based on what I have seen, I am, and I want to go on record, and I want, I, want, I want to say this prophetically. I want to say this by the Spirit. This is not Perry Stone now. This is by the Spirit. There will be, I don't know how many, but it appears on the East Coast and the West Coast over time and in time, there will be two tsunamis that will strike the United States. And uh, some, have, some have suggested to me that they may be planned by the government. That's a conspiracy theory or uh, it could be an underwater bomb that somebody lets off. But recently on the East Coast, there was something that happened uh, where, the, and again, it's got to do with the shaking of the, of the plates underneath the, the waters that connect, but something shifted and they had a warning all the way from Baltimore down to the Virginia Beach area. So uh, I'm just I'm just I'm just the messenger, okay? And if God were ever to tell me or show me to tell people like He did the lot, hey, get up and get out. Trust me, Perry Stone would take criticism for it, but I would tell you I have not felt that. I've not told people to move. I think all that is dependent because this could be years from now. It could be recent or soon, but it could be years from now. Now available is Perry Stone's latest DVD series, The Antichrist, His Confederacy, and the World's Final Eighth Empire. This new eight-hour expanded and detailed DVD teaching will explain the empire that will seize the world in the future. This teaching will unlock the final mystery of the Antichrist. In this series, Perry will explain where the theory of the Antichrist originates in Scripture, what the prophets, Christ, and the apostles taught about the Antichrist, the early fathers' teachings about the Antichrist, the men in history who were candidates for the Antichrist, the major prophecies concerning the Antichrist kingdom and his ten kings, the role Islam has in the future eighth kingdom, 
Discover the area the Antichrist comes from, where he rules, and what he will do. Learn details of the mark and image of the beast and global economic control. You will also discover numerous prophetic insights seldom known that are now revealed. This study will answer hundreds of your questions. It also includes word studies, amazing history, and combines Old and New Testament prophecies to give a clear understanding of this subject. These four DVDs, approximately eight hours of teaching, has numerous pictures and charts. This DVD series is Manifest Offer AK-139 and is available for a gift of just $65 or more. To order, visit perrystone.org or call toll-free 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323. You may also write to us and send a check or money order to Perry Stone Ministries, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320, and request offer number AK139. This offer is available on television for a limited time, so we look forward to hearing from you soon. Now, this is, I believe at least, this is the last of the dream series that we're going to share with you. There was more to it. Uh, but you know, sometimes it's only 15, 20 minutes or whatever, and so we decided to just do a, a four-part section to this. So thank you for joining us. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Uh, we still are offering the Antichrist series on DVD. Uh, I just can't explain to you the work and effort that went into this, the information, the revelation, the insight, the knowledge that you're going to receive. And it will answer, I promise you, it's going to answer hundreds of questions that you've had. And I really believe the younger generation, not just the seniors and also young couples, will really enjoy hearing this because it's telling you where things are going. And that's what we need to be aware of, of where things are going, what does the scripture say, how should we respond, how will it involve us? So all of that will be answered and we're looking forward to you getting this and thank you for the comments that we're receiving already. And I have to tell you something funny and that is you see my white hair and you see the black hair. That was previously taped uh, back a while back and edited so uh, that's when the hair was black and I went up on the mountain and met with God no I didn't really I quit going and letting the hairdresser put uh, dark over my hair and my mama is so happy my mama will need oh Perry I love your hair reminds me of your dad it reminds me of your dad so at least mama's happy okay if nobody else is so we want to let you know also that we have taped some very powerful teaching in the studio that starts next week I don't want you to miss it it's going to be real in depth spiritual warfare, practical, walking with God, and and, and I'm, I'm telling you, um, even the guys that when they heard us tape, one guy said, Perry, this is the kind of teaching you need to be doing now to help people through what they're dealing with and what they're going through. So uh, uh, Warrior Fest registration is about to open up if it hasn't already. Perrystone.org, you can go and register for the summer event in July. And again, Go to perrystone.org to see where we're going to be coming to in the future, maybe in an area near you. Thank you for joining us. We thank you for your prayers and your support to keep the program on the air. God bless you. Perry Stone invites you to join him June 24th through 27th at Omega Center International in Cleveland, Tennessee for the 2021 Prophetic Summit. Come here uncensored in urgent prophetic messages from Bill Cloud, Joel Richardson, Mark Biltz, and Perry Stone. Seating is limited, so register today. Go to perrystone.org for more information. Don't miss this incredible opportunity to be a part of the most significant prophecy event of the year, the 2021 Prophetic Summit. We'll see you there.